background noises. Good evening. My name is Latara Burley and I'll be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in the year 1996. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor, a minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, the Greek, nor the Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English language until 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular nor descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh let the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses a top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. 
The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of times. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. And we will have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Michael Bass. And we will have the scripture reading, which will be Revelations, the 21st chapter, read by Dr. Pamela Turner. And we'll have a musical selection today by Dr. Lisa Zazi. And the scripture readers are Dr. Pamela Turner and Dr. Lisa Zazi. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Let us all bow our hearts and minds. Dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, thank you for this evening and for allowing me to be here in class this evening and looking forward to the coming days of work, which I'll earn money and that we'll all learn something in this class like we do in every class. And I look forward to every, learning everything in this class today. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 I'm going to try my microphone again. If it doesn't work, then I'll unplug it and I'll just go without. Okay. Can you hear? Yeah. Sounds yep. good. Yep. Do you know how I long to see? for you just to find a loving there do you hear the pain I'm crying this world is deaf to my tears oh Yeshua I am my hand calm my fears though I know it's not so strange understanding the path I follow you pave the way but my heart's so hard just take it As I commune among my brethren and watch 
Be reading Revelations, the 21st chapter from the King James Version of the Bible, inserting the proper names. Revelations 21 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself shall be with them and be their Elohim. And Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come hither I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from Elohim, having the glory of Yahweh and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. 
and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth Chrysus, the eleventh adjacent, the twelfth an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for Yahweh Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of Yahweh did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. That was Revelation 21st chapter. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, Lisa. And also, that was a beautiful song. Okay, I'm getting feedback. Okay, thanks. Um, so Darlene doesn't seem to be here. Uh, she was supposed to cover plate 39. And um, uh, and then uh, Sarah is going to cover plate uh, 40. Um, are there any volunteers for plate 39? <laughs> <laughs> not, not much of a short notice there, huh? Uh, it's hard I enough. Mean, I mean, I could notice. start. Pardon me? I'm sorry. It's hard enough when you have a little notice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could just start and uh, maybe uh, um, people could could help me out on that. Unless our visitor, Felicia Hamilton, wants to give it a shot. I don't know. Um, I'm actually working, but I'll see what I can do in a little bit of time that I have. So um, thank you, oh, everyone. Okay. Nope. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Um, I love your your series on this. That's why I dialed in. I really, really enjoy hearing um, what Yash was revealed to the brother. And um, if you could scroll down, because I can't see the bottom, the court roundabout of that plate. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So I'm just going to do as um, Dr. Kenley said, this is an open book class and an open book test. So let's get the scriptures that are on that plate. And you can start with Second Peter. I think this is that three ten or five ten. Looks like a three. I can't tell. I think it's a three. Three ten. Yeah. 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 Thank right, you. Second Peter three ten. Mm -hmm. uh, three. Um, but the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with the great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh 
wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Is that, is that the end of that? That was 12. Okay. Um, so the first thing I thought of when I heard that was the um, um, being prepared for Yahshua's coming. So I thought about the um, bridegroom coming and the, you know, the, the brides, um, the ladies that didn't have oil in their lamps versus those that did. I thought about the watchmen, um, not warning the wicked, but um, mostly what I thought about was that being a spiritual uh, significance of the earth being melt with fervent heat. Um, I know I grew up with an aunt that was that that was and still is a devout Jehovah Witness. And I remember going to the hall, Kingdom Hall, and them talking about this scripture. And I didn't wonder about it because my family, I don't know if I ever said this on this in this um, class, but my family is not religious at all. I mean, I don't think anybody in my family owned the Bible until I was maybe uh, 12 or 13 years old. So religious is, <clears throat> religion was never something we talked about. But I remember being in Kingdom Hall and them going over this and they, you know, they used this to say how that, you know, we're going to be in a new physical heaven, I'm mean, being physical earth. And that, you know, God is going to or Jehovah God is going to clean up the earth and this is how it's going to happen. But I wondered in my mind, well, if it says it's going to burn up, hmm. how, you know, because I thought about a match. And, I can't, you know, if you light a match and you let it burn, it's consumed. It changes states. It's not the same state. So I would always wonder about that. And it wasn't until Yahweh brought me into class. I think I came when I was about nine. But I didn't understand this scripture until I got to the... Um, until Yahweh decided to reveal it to me that that's a spiritual thing that's going to happen. We're going to be in the spirit. That's our new earth state, not a physical earth. So the renovation of the earth is, is the separation of the wheat from the tares. So those in Yahshua and those who have the spirit of Yahshua will be glorified in the new earth state and those that are not will be thrown into the lake of fire. So uh, get the next scripture, which is Revelation. 20 and 11, excuse me. <clears throat> Revelation 20 and 11. Mm -hmm. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose mm -hmm. face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. So now that 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 one on the throne is Yahshua the Messiah and the throne. I Yahweh has me think of when I think about this is who is on your throne right now, who is in your most holy place. And the only one that should be there is Joshua. So we see that before we take off the flesh. That's why we're not burned when he comes in destroying by fire because fire does not burn fire. So if we have Yahshua on our throne and in us, then we are not consumed with the others. So go ahead and get Matthew 24, 35. <clears throat> Matthew 24 and 35. Yes. <clears throat> Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what it for that That's one? That's it. That's the okay. only one. But, yeah. Okay. So that one, um, it's funny because we had a workshop when we were still meeting in the physical. Um, and I had a question about earth versus um uh, uh, cause there was a scripture about Satan where it says he was cast out into the earth. And I said, well, okay, so is earth a physical body or is it the globe we're sitting on? And so this one, if you read that one more time for me. Yeah. Matthew 24 and 35, mm -hmm. heaven, and, heaven and earth shall pass away. Mm -hmm. My words shall not pass away. Mm -hmm. So I, I, uh, I thought about this one in two ways, you know, the physical heaven and earth will pass away. His words, which are life, which he said they are, the words he speaks are spirit and their truth and their life unto you. So for me, I always thought of that as once again, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, then that's what won't pass away. That's the word that won't pass away because the word is Yahweh Elohim. And Yahweh Elohim in physical form is Yahshua the Messiah. And if Yahshua the Messiah is in you, 
as in the, in his spirit is in you, then you won't pass away, but your physical body will pass away. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and get um, Isaiah 34 and four, I think that is. Yep, yep, that's what it is. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. So the only, and I don't. Oh, you got muted. Sorry, I, I don't understand that one. If one else wants to um, explain it, they can. But for me, I think of that as the, you know, physical planets, which we call the heavens will be, you know, dissolved the same way this earth, planet earth will be dissolved. Um, is that the way anyone else understands it? Yes, that's the way I see it too. Okay. And the last one here is Hebrews 1, 10 and 12. Yep, uh, Hebrews 1 and 10. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And thou, Yahweh, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Mm-hmm. They shall perish, but thou remain. Mm-hmm. And they shall all wax old as does a garment. Oh. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Wow, oh. that's pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, so once again, that's physical. And the reason most of those are is because of the place you're in, which corresponds to the court roundabout and that brazen um, altar of sin sacrifice. So you have to have all the scriptures speak to some kind of burning or consummation that takes place. So once again, it's talking about things being consumed or burned up, but Yahweh remaineth because Yahweh is eternity itself. So he doesn't abide within eternity. He is eternity. So now let's move up to the um, plate that corresponds with the um, holy place. And that's the new earth, new earth. And this is, the, this is the picture I often saw when I would go to the kingdom hall with my aunt. And, you know, you see lions and lambs together and, mm-hmm. you know, nobody's eating anybody and everybody's all hunky dory and happy. And, you know, I, I bought into it just, just as most people did before I understood what that meant. So get that scripture, which is there, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 17. And let's see what that says. 2 Corinthians 5 and 16. Wherefore Mm -hmm. henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Mm. Yea, though we have known the Messiah after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, that's very pretty. So it speaks, it speaks to not um, dealing with the flesh. And that, of course, is why you're in the holy place. You know, when you see the abomination of desolation stand in the holy place. Why? Because everything you need is there. But most importantly, it represents Yahshua the Messiah. So us not knowing any man after the flesh means I don't know Joel Turner as Joel Turner. I know Joel as a brother. I know Sherry as a brethren. I know Lisa as a brethren. That's how I see you all. I don't see you all as, you know, Joel Turner, the, the white, you know, cancer scientist, Sherry, the black teacher. I don't see that. You know, the world says that, but we know they do see that. That's the first thing they see. Mm-hmm. Whereas we, you know, having the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah in us, we see the brethren. We see Yahshua the Messiah. We see it's almost like looking in a mirror. When you see brethren, um, it's just that instant love, that instant connection that you have. And I'm so grateful for that. And so that's why you see people frolicking and dancing and you see the angels with them. And you also see, you know, the animals because it's not speaking to the physical. It's speaking to all things spiritual and that they are in harmony. If it's in spirit, it's harmony, it's harmonized. You know, there's that symbiotic relationship. They all rely on one another. So it has nothing to do with the flesh. And if you could move that back over a little bit more, you're, you're um, over a little bit into uh, yeah, the astopy. Okay, so now you go up to the plate that is corresponding to the most holy place. And you don't see scriptures there, once again, because we're talking about pure spirit. So you look there, you see, you know, the two angels on the side, you see the high priest or the king, 
And then you see the Ten Commandments. Why? It's written in a heart because that's written in your heart and mind. Mm -hmm. You sitting here on this Zoom call in a physical body in your home, you are actually in heaven right now listening to Yahshua speak through me to you and he's also speaking to me that is our new earth state that's where we are right now we're in heaven right on earth and Yahweh has allowed us to experience that so that when we do get compassed about with all these you know things that are going on in the world we remember that that glimpse that we have when we come to class we remember that peace that we have those two hours where we tune the world out and we're actually elevated. That's why this plate is an upward um, plate. It goes up, it goes from the bottom up. We, we are elevated into that most holy place and we hear these words of Yahshua and their soothing balm to all of us. It's like, okay, Yahweh, I can go a little bit longer. I can go a little bit longer. Just keep preaching to me, keep holding me. Keep me in your grasp. Don't let me go. And then, you know, when you come back down and you're in the two hours are over and, and you, you're back in this earth plane, you still remember what it was that Yahweh showed you and spoke to you about while you were in this Zoom class. So that's why you don't see words there. You see Alpha and Omega, but I'm sorry, you don't see scriptures because it wants you to think of that heavenly state where when you're there, there are no no physical words spoken you're just all communing via spirit with the spirit of Yahweh Elohim so for me that is what that plate um, symbolizes and represents I think it's a beautiful thing because as you start from plate one all the way to plate 40 you get Yahweh moves you just like he's moving you from a babe to an adult he gets you to a point where you're you should be mature in the spirit and know that all these things are coming to pass. We will be leaving here, but we first have to have that new heaven and earth in, within us, which is that immortal body inside these physical bodies. And with those, you will be able to move along to plate 40 with the rest of the host of Yahweh Elohim, those who are in righteousness say. So um, I thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I enjoy Tampa. You guys are are definitely my other family and I, I love you all and I miss you all. If you got anything out that give all praise and honor to Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Thanks, Felicia. That was, that was great. It was great. Anybody else like to uh, comment or um, or add to that? Okay, well I can add to it. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, that was really beautiful. And, you know, that's what we're looking forward to. And I think that the point that she made that, you know, it's like when I looked at that chart too, that's uh, with the, the, the new earth, you know, and um, how that people out here in the world, uh, you know, like, like Billy Graham said he was going to play golf on all the planets and, uh, you know, <laughs> and um, the, the problem is, is people are so attached to these, physical bodies that they cannot imagine uh, existing without them. Um, you know, I remember uh, family members getting very upset uh, when my grandfather died because uh, he was cremated because he died in Texas. Whoa, that was loud. Um, uh, he died in Texas and he, uh, uh, they 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 sent his ashes up to North Dakota to be to be buried, and I remember some of my relatives being livid about that because they believed that somehow that physical body was going to join up with um, you know or, or his soul and that body were gonna were uh, both going to be you know uh, translated into uh, to a heavenly state. And, uh, you know, people don't like it when you tell them, hey, when you die, you're not going to see grandma and grandpa, you're not going to see mom and dad, you're not going to see Uncle Fred, you know, I mean, you're not, you're, you're not going to be reunited with your physical family. As a matter of fact, you see, uh, you, you won't recognize them because there will be no physical, there's no physical resurrection. To me, saying physical and resurrection are contradictions in terms because uh, uh, you know 
I, as far as you know, physical bodies go, mine's reasonably healthy, and not at least not hideously ugly, you know. So you know, I, I think I think I, I you know I was dealt a pretty good hand. But when I take off this flesh, the last thing I want to look at is is Joel in the in the mirror. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, Dr. Kinley used to say, when you get up in the morning, look in that mirror and kill old self. Now he did not mean your physical body, obviously. But that personality that has uh, grown up in in that physical body, and what's interesting, if you look up the word personality, the root of the word personality is person, and the definition for that or etymology is an actor's mask, and and that's true. You see that you know you say oh someone has a good personality, well to me that's a negative thing. Um, they need to have. Uh, see, the only good personality, if I could put it that way, is Yahshu the Messiah. And, you know, we're all friends and stuff like that, but our bond, like, like you know, um, like Felicia was talking about, that, that we have that love of one another, and, 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 and that, that bond is through the Holy Spirit. It, there's nothing, it has nothing to do with the flesh, it has nothing to do with the physical. Um, so could you get for me, please... Um, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Yeah, you see them all dancing around there, you know, uh, having campfires and singing Kumbaya, you know, and they think that that's, that's going to be heaven. That sounds like a, a, a pretty boring heaven to me, honestly. I want to go on and learn more and more about Yahshua, you see, in, in, in his purpose and his, and his plan. And Dr. Kinley said, and this is actually scripturally true, it's, uh, I think it's in the, the book of Jude, that uh, we are going to go on and learn of Yahweh's loving kindness towards us, you see, in ages to come. Now, if, if, if it's going to take ages to come to learn that, that has to be some pretty magnificent stuff, okay? And um, I, I certainly do not uh, love this flesh enough to want to take it with me. That you see, you know. I mean, you look at the principle, and I've I've said this before, but you see, we are we are enslaved to these bodies. Okay, we work, all right, eight hours a day or ten hours a day. Felicia's working right now. Okay, I I got here just seconds basically before class started because I'm working, working, working. Now, why are you working? You're working for your physical body because you have to pay rent or a mortgage to house your physical body. You have to clothe your physical body. So you need money for that. You have to feed the physical body. You see, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and you can't just feed it anything. Okay. You could probably eat protein paste and live just fine on, on pennies, but no, no, we gotta, we gotta go out on Fridays. Um, and have a nice dinner, and you see, uh, we see. So we we have to feed it, we have to clothe it, we have to provide a, a house for it, we have to buy a car to haul this flesh around, so that you can so you can do all that work. I mean, you're literally enslaved to your own physical body because everything you do. Okay, you got to find someone to love your physical body. Uh, you got to go to the movies to entertain it. I mean, <laughs> talk about a ball in a chain. You see, I, I you know, I, I had a friend at, at work, you see, uh, referred to his wife as a ball and chain. And I thought that that was pretty distasteful. But the thing, they, the reality and the hypocrisy behind it is that thing he's walking around in, that's the ball and chain. You see, so we're, we're we want to move on and we don't want, uh, I, I want immortality. I want an immortal, glorified body. That's what I want. And you know something else, and this is something that Dr. Kinley also said. He said that when we die, we're going to receive an immortal, glorified body. And he says the angels are waiting to receive the same thing, a glorified body, all right? And that we're all going to receive that thing together. So the angels who are our brethren also, you see, they are waiting for that immortal, 
glorification. Now we know they have an immortal body, but it's not an immortal glorified body. And that's what they are waiting for. So uh, uh, could you get that scripture for me, please? Mm -hmm. I got it. First Corinthians uh, 15 and 50. Do you need to pick it up at all? Uh, sure. Yep. Um, I'll pick it up at 47. Okay. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is Yahshua from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. See, everybody out here that you know, let's see, uh, other than those that have an understanding of Yahshua the Messiah, and that only comes through, uh, you see, the, hearing the gospel and receiving that Holy Spirit. Everybody else out here, I don't care how philosophical they are, you see, I mean, there's websites uh, uh, from former members of the IDMR, okay, and I, I think they're the, the, they're uh, <clears throat> they're, in, they're in England, and they have a website, and, and in this website, they're teaching people that that you are Yahweh, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know see, that's been, that 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 idea has gone around a long time. And these people quit coming to class, and 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 I know people that have been uh, caught up and have left class, have left the IDMR because they have received a delusion that they are somehow Yahweh Himself. See that that they are the Alpha, the Omega. They are the the uh, uh, they have no limits and bounds. And you you ask them, okay. So if you can be what you will to be, which is what Yahweh's name means, be something, be something other than you. Can you be, can you be uh, uh, an, an, uh, uh, one cell taller than you are? By, by sheer will, can you grow a cell on top of your head? You see, mm -hmm. you can't do nothing, okay? <laughs> see? You know, if, if you could be what you will to be, you see, if, if I could do that, I certainly wouldn't be working. I certainly wouldn't be in a physical body. You see, I would. I, I would definitely just. You see, want to move on and and be in, in that that spiritual realm that we have been promised. You see, and that's something to look forward to. You know, don't don't be in love with that flesh. You see, uh, it's 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 just it's just not anything. You see, it's all we're familiar with. That's the problem. And when we come into class, we get a glimpse of something better, something way, way better. Just, just, a, just, just like looking through a keyhole, you see, we can see that light on the other side. And, and, and that's what we should desire. And I'm not saying you should like, you know, want to off yourself or whatever, but I'm saying, don't be afraid of death. Don't, and, 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 and look forward to that immortal glorification because what we have waiting for us on, on the other side, if I could put it that way, is so infinitely better than what we have here that it, it really our minds cannot fully or even partially conceive of it, okay? And that's what we have waiting for us. So, so we are... You see, we have borne the image of the earthy. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Uh -huh. 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither now, does flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, um, now, now, Felicia, did you ever point out this scripture to your Jehovah Witness family? <laughs> it, it, well, I, you don't have to answer that. I, I'm, you know, you, you might have, but um, they certainly probably wouldn't be happy about that. Okay. No, you're not going to see Uncle Fred, you see, when you, when, you know, Fred is dead. Okay. You're not going to see him. All right. It's, it's, there's not going to, it's not going to be dancing around like it is on that chart. That's a type. That's a shadow. That's just showing people in a state of righteousness, peace, and joy, okay? And see, that's why the, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of Yahweh, you see, cannot, the flesh and blood cannot inherit it, okay? Um, uh, keep reading there. 
And then I want Luke 17 and 20 and Romans 14 and 17. Go ahead. 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh huh. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So it says that we shall not all sleep. And sleep, we, we work with this, a class, okay? That, you know, how that you go through a death, burial, resurrection every night when you go to sleep, okay? But this is talking about actual death. Um, not everybody is going to die, that Yahweh is going to uh, bring this creation to an end and that we are down to the end of an age. Look at all the things that have happened in the last year that we couldn't have imagined would happen, you see, with this COVID and then also, you see, uh, the last few years politically and economically, you see, it's th things are... are, are are you see <laughs> you know just when we thought okay covid's over uh we get a new variant of it mm -hmm. and it's 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 like a raging fire this new mm -hmm. variant okay and and a lot of people are going to die from this and the reason why they're going to die mm -hmm. is because they have not been inoculated and they 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 are and 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 you know uh, um, you know, you know, I can understand people having reservations about it, but the stuff that people believe, and, and you see, it's like they're believing a lie, yeah. and that that's you see, that's why you see uh, there there's so much uh, misinformation out there. Okay, mm -hmm. and and you see these websites. I I was listening the other day. These websites that are uh, or um, these Facebook sites. Okay, that that are anti-vaxxers, mm -hmm. okay? They, 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 you know why they're not taking them off? Because you see fa Facebook and Twitter and uh, these other uh, uh, social media sites, they actually will be, uh, uh, will be shut down uh, by the government if they start telling blatant lies. So I was listening on NPR, they were talking about this, this particular uh, Facebook site. Um, it, it's called Newswire. <laughs> when the person first started talking about it, I thought she was saying News Liar. Okay. Mm. And it turned out it is News Liar. And, and, and they found that this site has more hits than the New York Times, uh, uh, the uh, CNN, and see all, they listed like four or five of the major news sources. And this particular site has more hits uh, from a social media standpoint than all these major news outlets. And they, but the thing is, is that what they do is, is they don't tell things that are untrue. What they do is, is they, uh, they tell things and they leave things out. See, they, they're basically lying by omission. So they'll bring out some facts about something, okay? Say, you know, that, that uh, there's been possibly a link of a, a neuro, neurodegenerative disorder and uh, uh, the virus. But what they don't tell you is the chances of you get, getting that are astronomically small compared to the chances of you dying from the COVID. Uh, virus itself. So they lie by omission mm -hmm. and that people are being sucked into that. And see, so, so back to my point, the point is, is this COVID and all the crazy things that are going on. These are signs. These are witnesses that we are down now to the end of an age that we are going to inherit, you see, that new kingdom very soon, that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. You see, and that, you see, uh, I'll tell you, there's nothing I wouldn't give to inherit, you see, 
that 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 new heaven and that new earth you see in righteousness okay now it says here that the kingdom of yahweh cannot see uh that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of yahweh and he said behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling an eye all right so all this kind of stuff is going to happen all right now read verse 53 please First Corinthians 15 and 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. This more and this mortal must put on immortality. Okay. And, and uh, uh, read 54. I love I love I have 55 too. I love these verses. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You see, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Death is going to be swallowed up in victory. You see, and you see, really, you, you know, that's, you can, you can, you know, uh, correlate that physically, but really, um, <laughs> you know, another thing that, 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 you just it's on on all the time is zombie movies the walking dead mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm like that's nothing new you know mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean those are the people i work with those are the people i see at the grocery store it's like i'm surrounded by the walking dead mm -hmm. and you see but it's you know and it's only through the grace of yashua that we have something better and that you see in in his eyes they're all dead you see, unless they come into a knowledge of the truth and partake of that Holy Spirit. Everybody else is dead. Okay. And, and you know, it's, it's just, it's just the way Yahweh's purpose is. You can like it, you can lump it, but that's just the way it is. Now, I want to get back to this, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, now, now we are inheriting, see, we, what we're waiting for is immortal glorification. But it really, in truth of fact, we are inheriting that kingdom now, you see, and, and that's, in our, that's, that's in our aims, to inherit eternal life when? Later? No, now, in the kingdom of Yahweh, with the hope of immortal glorification. So really, we are inheriting, you see, that spiritual kingdom now, okay? And it says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. So it must be something different. Now read Luke 17 and 20, please. And then uh, Romans 14 and 17. Luke 17 and 20. Is that the right one? Yes. Yes, yes. here we go. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Yahweh should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of Yahweh cometh not with observation. See, it it, comes it comes not, not. Sorry, Thank you. Uh, I should probably actually go downstairs because <laughs> I get so much feedback um, uh, from from um, her microphone. But but anyways, so the, the kingdom of Yahweh, you see, it comes without observation. All right. Now, see, they asked Yahshua you know, when will the kingdom of Yahweh come? And I think it's in that 17th chapter of Luke, you see. And, and he says it comes with, without observation. Or in other words, you see, that kingdom of Yahweh came into being on the day of Pentecost. That's when the kingdom of Yahweh, you see, Yahshua did come in to bring the kingdom in fulfillment of the scriptures. You see, he had to bring in a kingdom. See, that's why the Jews were asking you know, uh, you know, him, um, you know, and, and even the apostles before they received the Holy Spirit, they, they asked him, you know, when, when will the kingdom come, you know, and they were asking about a, a physical kingdom. And he says, it comes not with observation. Now read uh, uh, Romans 14 and 17, please. Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You see, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in that Holy Spirit, you see. And that, that, that new kingdom started, you see, back there in Pentecost. 
And when you come into class and you hear this gospel and you receive of that Holy Spirit, okay, that is where you inherit the kingdom, okay? You have inherited, and, 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 and you see, and here you are, you see, and you're walking around in a physical body, but yet you're spiritually minded, or you are, you see, in principle, in a, in a heavenly state, okay? Now, this flesh and blood cannot inherit kingdom. Let me give you another uh, 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 witness on that. Uh, get from me Matthew 22. Yeah, I think 23. And then I'll shut my big mouth. I got it, Pam, because it's easier. Okay. Matthew 22 and 23. Yeah, read down for a little bit. Okay. okay. Matthew 22, 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. Okay, stop. Okay. Now, Dr. Kinley said, because... <laughs> He, he said they didn't believe in a resurrection, you see, a resurrection from the dead. That's why they were sad, do you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know I, that it's really painful, but it's really, really funny too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, Yahweh has, a, a, I mean, if, if you went up to someone and you told them that you didn't believe in the, in the resurrections from the dead, they would think you were sad, you see? They would, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So here are the Sadducees, um, you see, because you see there were, there were several sects of, of Judaism, you see, at this time, they had split all up. Okay, there were the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, uh, the Essenes, the, the, uh, the uh, Zionists, the Zealots. I mean, there, there were, you see, all kinds of divisions in, in the Judaism at that time. So he was talking to those Sadducees, okay? And so the, the, these people that do not believe in a resurrection uh, think they're gonna trip them up. So they, they ask him a question. You see, just like David, okay? See, um, uh, when, when those presidents and princes back there in Babylon tried to trip up uh, uh, Daniel, I'm sorry, when they tried to trip up Daniel, it, they, they couldn't do it as far as his behavior, because he was perfect. And the king loved him because uh, there was in him a good spirit, okay? And so they, 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 when they got together and figured out how they were gonna get rid of Daniel, they thought, well, the only way that they could do it was concerning the law of his Elohim, okay? And they, they obviously did their homework and found that see daniel was 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 not going to bow to any image okay and and was was only gonna or or king at that time he was not going to bow to that king nebuchadnezzar if okay and they appealed to nebuchadnezzar's uh pride in thinking that he was a god king and they knew they knew something about daniel's uh, uh beliefs and that he could not bow down to anybody save yahweh all right so they tried to trip him up concerning uh, his Elohim. So here they are. They're trying to trip, trip up Yahshua concerning, you see, and they're, they're, they're using the law of Moses, okay, to try to do this. It's just same thing, same principle going on. Okay, he's fulfilling Daniel here. All right, now keep going, please. Matthew 22 and 24. And saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Okay, so that's in the law, all right? So now they're gonna take that and they're gonna set up, you see, a, a scenario, all right? So here's the scenario, go ahead. 25, and there were with us seven brethren. Now there were with us seven brethren. And the first, when he had married a wife, deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. So under the law, that's what they were supposed to do. If, if like, say the oldest brother got married and, and he kicked the bucket, his brother was obligated to marry, you see, uh, his, his brother's wife. Okay, this was under the law, all right? And to have uh, children, that's what issue is, okay? To have offspring or children 
Um, and and the, these children would actually be considered his brother's children. Okay, now there was a man under the law who, uh, uh, when he was uh, he was told to do that, and he had intercourse, you see, uh, with his brother's wife after the brother died, and instead of impregnate, impregnating her, he spilt the seed on on the ground, and Yahweh killed him for it. All right, so there's an example of that under the law. But go, go on, please. Twenty six. Likewise, the second also, and the third, unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. So all seven brothers um, died and had no children. And finally, the woman died. So, all right. So, so here's the hook. Go ahead. 28. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Okay. So see how they're, they're, they're taking that law and they're twisting it around and trying to trip him up. So whose wife shall she be in the resurrection? Because they don't believe in the resurrection. All right, now, so here, here, Yahshua, go ahead. 29, Yahshua answered and said unto them, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Yahweh. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of Yahweh in heaven. See, they shall be as the angels of Yahweh in heaven. You see, because flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of, of Yahweh, all right? That we shall be as angels. And there's not going to be uh, chick angels and guy angels and little baby angels, okay? <laughs> it's just not going to be that way, all right? We're, we're, see, it does not appear what we shall be like but we know we shall be like him. We're going to be, you see, the, the children of Yahweh Elohim or Yahshua, and we're going to bear a resemblance to him. And, and see, don't, don't put that in a carnal package, okay? I'm talking spiritually. I'm talking that the attributes that you will have, you'll have those attributes, and those attributes will be in a form of righteousness, you see, just like Yahweh Elohim. You see, is that body a principle, okay? And that we will bear resemblance to him, hopefully. You see, and those that don't, you see, those will, will be the ones that uh, in that eschatology that Sheree did such a nice job with uh, last week, you see, that will be cast in, into that, that lake of fire. So, um, so, so that's all I wanted to add to that. I'm sorry, yeah, I, I feel feel these days like I could just talk forever about the gospel is just you know and I praise Joshua for that you see because that's that's the only place where that stuff comes from mm -hmm. um you see and, and like like um Felicia said if uh, if you got anything out of that praise Joshua okay mm -hmm. so anybody else want to comment or or uh, uh add anything to that Okay, well, I guess then we'll move on to plate 40, which will be uh, done by Sarah Thomas from, uh, uh, I, I, I'll say the Green Bay, Wisconsin class, but I feel like she's a member of our class too, just mm -hmm. like Felicia said. Um, uh, you know, you can be members of multi-class. <laughs> so please, Sarah, uh, take, take, take it from here. All right, thank you. Um, how's my volume? It's good. It's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys have welcomed me into your class too. And I felt very at home, um, you know, with the stability over the last, you know, pandemic months. But um, so looking at plate 40, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, when they were going through the plates and getting volunteers, when Joel was going through them, and I looked at the plates and thought to myself, I hope I don't get plate 40. <laughs> And then he's like, play 40, Sarah Thomas, which I figure is probably why I should work with it. Because sometimes when you're reluctant to do something, it's probably for your own good or something. <laughs> but um, the reason I was reluctant to work with this a little bit in the beginning is there's a couple of questions that arise right away when I look at it. And I'm going to go through, here are my questions first. 
And then I'm going to go through the scriptures and the Elohim book and the things I worked with. So plate 40, you'll notice, is a little different than the other plates on the 40 plate chart in the fact that it is not divided into three um, clear divisions like the other ones. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's not the three divisions. So at first I asked myself, I mean, why isn't this divided into three parts? I can see elements from the tabernacle here. I can see that the can the seven branch lampstand is, you know, across this guy's abdomen, and I can see there's a, a burning fire at his feet, similar to these other plates. So you could see that the um, the separations are kind of implied in a way, and I understand that this is Elohim, and Elohim is the pattern of everything. So I could see that there is a like an implied tabernacle here, but the divisions aren't there. So I was curious you know, why isn't that um, like that? I've been um, fortunate enough to do in-person class a couple times here because Green Bay had their picnic. And I, I went through um, and talked with some folks about this and no no answers on, on anybody's part. And as I'm talking, I can hear a bunch of stomping, which means uh, little boys are gonna come and hug me while I'm talking to you, but um, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, so my first question was, why wasn't it three clear divisions here? A second question I had is, you know, as I did my research, um, and I will share this research with you guys, this sanctum of sanctoriums represents Elohim. Um, and my question right away was, why wouldn't this represent Yahweh um, before I went through and I kind of worked with it? So that was the second question I had, because the idea that, if this is the sanctum of sanctoriums or ho I love you. holy of holies, that to me, looking at like Godhead charts and stuff would more represent Yahweh pure spirit. So that's, you know, a little bit more. So those are the things that kind of occurred to me in the very beginning. So anyway, all of that, those are the questions I had. So if I look at this, um, I had the study chart from, um, oh gosh, Lansing as well when I was kind of going through it. And at the top of the Lansing chart, it says Tau ending Omega. Mm -hmm. And then across um, Elohim's throat, it says the words at rest. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's completely the same as this picture. So those were a few things that helped me as I was um, going through it. Plus there is a scripture reading on the bottom here, Revelations 1 and 12 through 20. So mm -hmm. I think a good spot to start is to just jump in and read this Revelation 1 verses 12 through 20. And as you're looking at this, you're going to see that this is an illustration of what's um, on this chart. So thank you if you don't mind reading this. Revelation 12, um, I'm sorry, 1 and 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me in vain turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. All right, so it's describing what he sees. It says that John on the Isle of Patmos turns, and he is seeing this vision. Um, and for the vision, he's describing the parts of it. Okay, so go to verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a, in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not, I am the first and the last. So that's why um, the Lansing chart says at the top of it, um, oh, tau ome uh, ending and omega, I am the first and the last, you know, and we've heard this before, the alpha and the omega is on the other, in the previous um, plate there. Um, Alpha would be the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and omega would be the last letter. Tau, T-A-U, is the last 
letter or the ending of the Hebrew alphabet, if that's possibly right. And I do have that in a transcript, but I didn't check that one out like in a dictionary to see if that's um, is if that's legitimate. So anyway, um, so I am the first and the last. Um, and then yeah, just if you could just read out those last couple ones here. Eighteen. I am a he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Well, amen. We don't really say that. And have the keys <laughs> of hell and, and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And then, all, and then in this one, he starts to kind of go through and talk about um, almost like a like what did he have revealed to him about this so verse 20 he's explaining about a mystery um so i guess you could read verse 20 since it's listed here okay the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches yeah, and then it continues on. So looking at this one, it makes a lot of sense that you have this seven branch lampstand and that you have these seven stars in his hand in this illustration and in this vision. If this is the plate representing um, Elohim at rest after completing his purpose, which is what this does um, show us, that he was the beginning, the author, and he is the finisher. He's the, the first and the last. And so... Um, we see our part in this thing on plate 39, but this is about, this is about Elohim. Because at first I thought at rest, is that us at rest? Or is, is that speaking about Elohim? And this means he has completed his purpose. He's completed his purpose. Um, and so he's be able, able to be at rest, you know, and seven would represent rest or Sabbath. The idea that on the seventh day he rested, um, you know, and so on. So I looked up sanctum, sanctoriums, it's a Latin phrase, and it's a translation of a Hebrew term meaning holy of holies, um, which is, this is where I was a little screwed up because I thought if this represents the holy of the holies or the most holy place, why doesn't this represent Yahweh and pure spirit? However, if you consider that this is the, this is Elohim at rest when he completes his purpose, it kind of jumps back into, um, we were just there, 1 Corinthians 5, oh gosh, let me grab it, 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. 15, 15, and I want to get, how far did we go? We went down to 50. Okay, or, that's or a lot. It. Holy crow. Uh, well, what I want actually is 22... I want to I want to get 22 to 28 again just to kind of show this. So I think that I'm going to ask you to read this again. 1 Corinthians 15:22. And it's this is going through the purpose of Yahweh. And it talks about um you know you know what chart I'd like on on the, this too would be the um the Moses the Moses chart. And at the top where it has the the vision of Moses of Elohim and then the vision of John like that top part, because I think that helps too with this. So I'll wait till that like hops up on here and then I'll talk a little bit about that. So um, see on the top, it shows on the left side there, it shows Moses pan panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses. And then over there, it says panoramic vision of Elohim to John. This is where I had seen that image on plate 40 before is right next to John. You can see it this Eloistic shape. And then there's a candle. You see the candles there on his front and he's got the white hair. It's as if he's clothed in the garments of beauty and glory from the tabernacle versus mm -hmm. the first, um, the, the panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses. You can see it's more of a naked, um, you know, there's no garments in that one. So the reason you have the same thing here is because they're seeing the same vision. Mm -hmm. It's just that John is looking back and Elohim, uh, I'm sorry, and Moses looking forward. So the fact that John is describing Elohim and the, the, the lampstand and as if an altar and all of this, this is the same thing that 
Moses saw, he just described it in terms of how he was given a vision to create this tabernacle, you know, so mm -hmm. they're seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that they're describing it kind of in a different way. And when you read um, that thing in Revelation, and it's like out of his mouth came a two edged sword and you're like, what? But that's just a symbol of something where he talks about his word is quick and powerful as a two-edged sword like it's not that he like literally had a sword for a tongue you know these are these are like symbols or these are like they stand for something else mm -hmm. so anyway um this is the purpose of Yahweh here we can see on this chart and we can see the idea that and I guess if you want to zoom out a little bit this is how I've understood the purpose of Yahweh is that it kind of starts up here with the the part that says Yahweh is spirit manifesting within the cloud and Yahweh started and this is the planning stage where he was planning thought like thought he's thinking thinking and planning and then he takes on shape and form as Elohim which you can see in that panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses so Yahweh pure spirit takes on shape and form his attributes are are organized in this case and he has now a purpose and he's going to carry out the purpose. And that is the word, thought, word, Elohim is the word. And he comes to the people in visions. Elohim is also the archetype original pattern of the universe. So this whole creation is created according to his pattern of himself. So we have, um, that's, th that's the, sh the shape and form, Elohim, and that begins this purpose right here. When Yahweh Elohim took on shape and form, then that is the beginning of this purpose. And the reason that's important is because then he goes through down, takes on shape and form as Elohim. And then, um, and this is just in John one and, you know, one, we don't have to get it. We get it a lot. And I feel like time's going to slip away from me. Um, takes on shape and form as Elohim. And then that word was made flesh and dwelt among us, it says. Um, and he, that's where he fulfills the things written about in the law and the prophets the things that the word told the, the prophets to write and the things you know that were revealed to these people to write over time then Yahshua physical body Yahshua the Messiah comes in and fulfills that then um after Yahshua's death burial and resurrection um which we have down here in the bottom of this chart he pours out his holy spirit in the in the new covenant and the idea then is he started off pure spirit, took on shape and form as Elohim, came in as a physical body, thought, word, and deed. And then that's where we get this thing in Corinthians. So can you um, start reading it? Like I said, at 22, and it's talking about Adam, because this is where we find out the purpose of Yahweh needed to be that Yahweh is salvation. And so you needed a, a, a perilous situation where all mankind was going to die and be in grave danger, um, and that you needed a savior, you can't just have the purpose of Yahweh be salvation and have no peril, because that's that's a bad purpose. You know, that's like when Oren tries to help me open the pickle jar, he's four years old. Like, your per your, that's a vain purpose. I will just open it, kid. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's not, you have to be actual peril. So go ahead and read at 22. Okay, First Corinthians 15 and 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. Okay, so this is like a really fast summary of the purpose <laughs> of Yahweh. Like, so after Elohim takes on shape and form and then creates this creation according to a pattern that we know the days of creation include the, like man, um, you know, and then we have the story of Adam and Eve and we have the story of the serpent or the devil um, who deceives the woman and they're cast out of the garden so um then through all that history of death reigning from adam to moses and then no one being able to complete this law so then death continually reigning from moses all the way to yahshua the messiah then we have this and so in the messiah shall all be made alive and that's with the outpouring of the holy spirit so keep going in um the next verse 23 but every man in his own order the messiah the first few first fruits afterward they that are the messiahs at his coming you might say like what do you mean this the, the in the order well it's because the messiah 
resurrected from the dead first and that everybody being made alive life after death that would be after his sacrifice on the cross and going through that death burial resurrection so and afterward those that are the messiahs at his coming you know and i think that you can grab this um at some point in john if we even have time but talking about maybe it's in matthew where the messiah says to um it's like he's talking to his father separate from him but this is the same yahweh's one so yahshua says you know that he's going to preach to those that the father gave him or whatever something like this what does that mean well remember if in the pure spirit this is thought that's where he's thinking and thinking and planning and so that means that in that state then he commits to who he will save and how he's going to go about this purpose with the word and then Yahshua just has to carry out that purpose as it was already planned and spoken because Yahshua can't just come in and be like you know what I'm not going to fulfill the stuff that was already written I'm going to do my own thing it can't be that way this is um, one mind here it's thought word and deed in unity and so yashua um is able to give life eternal life and that more immortal glorified body and all that to those who are given to him but you know in that planning process um and then that word so then okay 24 24 then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to yahweh even the father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Okay, so those are those couple plates before this, like the the whole lake of fire and then the what happens to the people and everything. And 25, verse 25, you can read, and 26, those are kind of those putting those enemies under their, their feet. So go ahead with those. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he shall put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Okay, and then 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that Yahweh may be all in all. Okay, so that is how this works, is that once Yahshua has carried out his purpose, the death, burial, and resurrection, he's poured out his Holy Spirit, then in the end, um, we become that bride or that woman clothed in the sun, right within him, just like Eve was taken out of Adam in the beginning, and she was in peril at that moment, but when she was within her husband, she was safe, like, um, you know, like the people who rode around in like Noah's Ark were safe inside of there, but on the exterior was peril. Similar to that, when we were inside the husband, we were safe. But when we are outside of the husband, we are in danger. Um, so then when it says that everything is put back subject, um, everything is put back into him, and then he, he goes back to the father, and everything is then Yahweh is then back everything all in all so a better picture of this kind of is on the chart do you guys have the chart yeah the chart for the pattern and plan of salvation that's kind of like a mini 40 plate chart and it has those circles on the top of it does it does yours have those circles yeah so thank you the elementary chart I can never remember what it's called so you can see up there on the circles on the left you can see that's the beginning and then all the way on the right where it says new earth you can see that's you know, that's the end. The purpose has been fulfilled and he saved his souls. So anyway, all that being said, we can probably jump back to that 40. And, oh, and the sanctum of sanctoriums or whatever is on this one too. You can see that one on the bottom there on the right. Um, and you can see this image as well. No, no additional scriptures here, uh, you know, but that's okay. So this is showing, you know, so how could Elohim be at rest? He can be at rest because he carried out his, the purpose that he planned back in pure spirit. He took on shape and form and he, um, he was the word, you know, and then he carried out his purpose, which was salvation. It was salvation. And so when he can be at rest, you might think, okay, like then what? It doesn't mean that this is the last purpose of Yahweh. This is him at, this is Elohim at rest, but Yahweh will have purposes after this purpose. 
you know, just like we had, you know, I had last year, I had a purpose. It was um, teach school in a, like a hybrid model. And then that year was done and I did summer and I am resting. I am resting, but I would be lying if I didn't tell you that at night I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking about next school year and what it's going to look like and how it's going to be back to kind of like a normal school year. And I know I'm redoing my curriculum. So I'm already planning my next purpose in my mind, but I haven't committed any of it to paper yet. Mm -hmm. And I haven't typed up my lesson plans. I'm just thinking because I'm not committed yet. But once I put those things into writing, into words, then I'm held accountable to those things. And then I have to carry them out as a teacher and I have to follow my plan that I made with my students. And um, you might say, well, a teacher can change their plan. Yeah, you're right. You can change to a point here and there and, and adjust, but I still have to meet the same standards that I have to meet. And I am accountable to that. I can't make that go away. Mm -hmm. I've ordered books for this school year that I'm gonna teach. I can't just say, oh, thanks for spending, you know, 1100 bucks on my class. I'm not going to teach these anymore. Like I can't, there comes a point when you're committed to your purpose. And mm -hmm. that's how it is with Yahweh. The Yahweh could think and think and think in that day of eternity in that pure spirit state. But then when he became that shape and form, when he took on shape and form as that form Elohim, that's the beginning of this purpose. Yahweh is salvation. And then everything that happens in this purpose, he's carrying it out you know, which is part of carrying it out was then taking on flesh and fulfilling the law and pouring out his Holy Spirit. But then when his purpose is completed, then he can be at rest here. So, phew, that was a lot. All right. So a couple of things that I found. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I don't want to get too much of this. So let, um, could we get Okay, textbook, volume three, page 13, talks a little bit about this. So you know that I'm not just talking and describing a picture on a chart, you know? I saw it because I did do, I read a lot on this because I wasn't very comfortable with this, this plate. So um, volume three, page 13. And it would be the second, yeah, a little farther. It'll be the second paragraph. It'll be like right in there. And this goes through kind of the same thing. So a little, a little bit farther, 13. I got it, Pam, if you don't. Oh, I have it. Okay, great. All right. So now looking at this here, um, this is describing kind of like I showed you on the Moses chart, how Moses saw the vision of the tabernacle. And then, um, so I think the spot to start to read is it's, I guess it's halfway through a sentence. So that's probably um, not great, but do you see where it says, um, Moses was shown in a vision, the cloud atop Mount Sinai when the cloud covered the mount for six days. And Yahweh revealed himself to Moses in an incorporeal form, Elohim, a spirit form without flesh and blood. Do you see where that is? Yeah. Exodus 20. Okay. Could you start reading right there and transfigured or trans... Oh, it jumped down on me. Okay. Transfigured or transformed. Okay. Do you want me to start at where you left off? Yeah, like, could you start at the word transfigured? Uh-huh. Thanks. Transfigured or transformed himself into a threefold tabernacle. He thus showed and instructed Moses how to build this tabernacle and said to him that it was a pattern. Moses, therefore, seeing Yahweh in shape and form as a super incorporeal spirit being or man, Elohim, and later seeing him create the first earthly man, Adam, out of the dust of the earth, wrote that Elohim created man in his own likeness and image. Yeah, so like this is a huge thing that I don't think that I really could understand for a long time in class. The idea of how do I prove that Elohim is the pattern? How can I prove that Elohim transformed or transfigured himself into the pattern? How do I show somebody that because it is clear that everything in the universe is made according to that pattern when you start giving people examples of that. But how do you prove that that's Elohim? And this, this explains right here how. It says that Moses, since Moses first saw Yahweh in that 
Eloistic form. And then after that saw man created in that vision and then said, Yahweh created man in his, or Elohim created man in his likeness and image. This is, this is how you are able to prove that like, okay, if Moses saw both things and said man was in that likeness and image, this is how we know that that is the pattern. So, okay, go ahead and um, keep going. Where are we at? Can I ask? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, so are you on? Yeah, you're so go up four lines. Okay. Up where your cursor is. So you see your cursor? Yep. Oh, that's more than four. Um, it's the word it on the far right. I know you can't. Um, it stands the far to right. Reason. Okay, I think I see it. Okay. Stands Thanks. to reason that if the tabernacle, do you see where that is? I'm sorry. Yep. It's, it's funny because I've also yeah, got the same thing on my screen, but then you're Yeah, okay. you're right there. Okay. So it stands to reason then that if the tabernacle is a direct transformation of the super incorporeal form that Moses saw, then man is an exact duplicate of the tabernacle. Okay, so you might be wondering why we jumped here. And partially is because when I control F uh, searched inside here, Pretty soon you're going to see it talks about the sanctum of the sanctorium. However, if you think about it and back on that 40th plate, you had elements of that tabernacle overlaid in that visionary form of Elohim. You had his, his head was like a white cloud, which if you think about the tabernacle, that, that gray and white cloud of incense that was in the, uh, in between the archangels, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've got that and you've got a, like a furnace by his feet would be like the altar of sacrifice. And you had the, the, the seven branch lampstand in the middle. Like, so you can see how that was the tabernacle once again, overlaid on that vision. Mm -hmm. So, okay, go ahead. The tabernacle then is the key to the understanding of how man is made in the likeness and image of Elohim. And we have taken the tabernacle and compared it structure by structure with the anatomic or structural makeup of the physical body, proving that man is a walking tabernacle or an express image of Elohim, who is the sanctum of sanctorium. And here they define that as the tabernacle of tabernacles, which makes way more sense. Because if you think about it as the holy of holies, um, it makes a little less sense because if Elohim is that archetype original pattern, you could see how he was the ultimate tabernacle that all other copies are, are made after or all other copies are an example of. Um, so this, this helped with that question that I initially had reading this here in the textbook. So thank you for getting that. And then we're done there. And then, um, Oh boy, let me just see, there is one more spot in a, in the textbook. No, I don't think so. I think maybe I'm done with that. I think I might be done all, all over with that. Um, do you guys have, you may not have this chart. Do you have the, do you have the chart that um, Mitch put together, which are like the 40 plate chart, but like really super like scripturally detailed. I think I do. Cause they have a, a, a plate on there that matches with this one, but it's a little different. And I kind of just wanted to show that too. Um, Yeah, that's it. Okay, sweet. So under elementary chart number three, it's in the bottom right. And I don't know if you'll be able to zoom in or not, but I noticed this was weird. And I think you probably have a copy. I feel like this is the chart from Green Bay, but I'm not sure. But I took an actual photograph with my cell phone of this chart. So elementary chart number three on the bottom, you see it says new purpose. Um, oh, I don't know if, oh. You yeah. see it's the you bottom. See it's the bottom left chart, Sherry. Okay. So the bottom, yeah, that chart, and then she's and on it's the- it's like all yellow on the bottom right. The right all, plate. All the way to the right. Oh, this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. One more over. Yeah. One With over, any. okay, I see it, new heaven, okay. okay. So let me see. Oh, a little farther, one more over. You might yeah. not be able to show it, but- Is it the one that says ending? It's the one that says right next to it, yep, ending. Oh, you want the ending? Yep, the very next one. Okay. Yeah. 
So here it says ending, and that's very much like the idea of omega tau ending. And um, this had some more specific scriptures on this one. I can see that yours is a little fuzzy, and that's okay. Yeah. The only thing I wanted to point out about it is that it, it says new purpose on it. And it talks about how, um, how, you know, he's the author and finisher. Um, he's of the book of life. And, you know, it just goes through the scriptures and kind of talks about how Elohim, um, you know, and it talks about Yahshua being the first and the last, but this one was divided into three parts, which I thought was very strange but that you had at the top, Yahweh is over all and he's all in all and the ancient of days. And in the middle, it talks about author and finisher of the book of life, like Elohim. And the bottom, it says Yahshua is the first and the last. Last Beside me, there is no other Elohim, you know, and he can subdue all things to himself. So this one separates it into three. And once again, talks about how these three are one, you know, it's one body, you know, it's one, you know, it's one body. It just happens to be that there are different jobs that these things have. That Elohim has a certain function, and um, and so on. So, uh, you know, the only other thing I really found maybe uh, could be. I guess it would be back in the textbook. Sorry, Sherry. Um, on volume one, page one. 20. And this has, uh, I found the word tau, T-A-U, the last um, letter. And this is where it's going through in the textbook. And it's going through Psalms where it has, Psalms 119 has a whole bunch of Hebrew letters written um, before certain verses. Um, so I wonder if, if you can find that one. So it'd be like page 119 or 120 of the volume one yeah i have it it's um it's talking 120 yeah. okay and it says tau mm -hmm. and then it references psalms 119 to uh 169 to 176 but then it just discusses um and has nice scriptures if you wanted to look more deeply into this that purpose of yahweh and kind of the idea of all of us returning back to the bosom of the father and what is the rest like so could you just read that 22 tau and then um i don't know that might be all that i can can do with this i still have some questions after you read that i'll probably bring up my like last question and then i'll see if anybody can do anything you want to go with that um, lisa yeah yep i got it my textbook reads um it's got a different title but it's, it's the same paragraph um Tau Psalm 119, um, 169 through 176. And once again, we're getting this because that was the word that was at the top of my, um, the, yeah, the yeah. plate 40 that I saw. Okay. And it's the okay. last, yeah, I didn't want you to just think I was just getting old. Okay, go sure. ahead. Yep. Tau in Hebrew is the universal womb of Yahweh, where we all were before, well, we all were before being made subject to vanity. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. We now look for the promised Sabbath that we have never had. So it's kind of going through that Psalms and discussing the Sabbath. And how we're going to have our rest as well with him, in him, you know. Okay, go ahead. We now look for that promised Sabbath that we have never had. We have now learned our lesson and shall praise Yahweh eternally. We have now learned our lesson and have returned to the fold throughout eternity. You know, so the idea that there is a rest as well for us. And then that rest is within, within Yahweh we're within that body we're part of the we're within the temple of Yahweh we're within the holy city we're within the kingdom like there's a lot of ways to look at it and you're part of something that's going to be so um, phenomenal that you spend the rest of eternity you know praising Yahweh um, and learning of him because of the, you know his greatness that's a that's an excellent that's excellent news right 
um, you know, and then he'll kind of go on for ages to come. So if you could just grab that final time, that plate 40. Um, so like the only other reason that I I'm like was nervous of working with this one, uh, plate 40, other than the fact that it does, it does seem different than some of the plates that had fewer scriptures and stuff is because um, even though after having kids, this has gotten better for me um, in my understanding, it was bad prior to having kids. Um, and I can kind of briefly explain this. I, I feel very close to my creator and I am excited to go on ages and to come learning of him. And I want to be in the bosom of the father and I want to be part of that kingdom. You know, that, that is a great hope and joy. And then it talks about Elohim being at rest like, I just don't ever want to, um, like, cease to exist. And I don't mean my personality. I, like, l just literally mean I don't want my soul to cease to exist. And that is a, a state of kind of nervousness, just personally for me, that has bothered me for a long time. Um, I, I, part of the reason, I think, is because I lost my mom when I was really young. I was 15, and she had, she suddenly decided to commit suicide, and it was a, the shocking, and how could somebody be just cease to exist so quickly. So I know that there's some baggage there, but I want to go learning about him for, for ages to come. And I want to be part of, I want to continue to exist, you know? So, um, and the reason I'm saying that is because this chart, the idea that he's finished and then we'll do purposes after that, I still want to be, I want to be in existence and want to be part of that. Um, and, you know, there's an anxiety there about what if, you know, and that's, you know, foolishness and kind of a waste of my worrying. And the reason that I felt better after having kids is because when I had those kids in my stomach or in my, in my womb, they were experiencing a creation that they couldn't possibly understand, but they were not experiencing it in a very uh, vivid or concrete way. They could hear muffled voices and noises, and they could experience the sense of smell enough where they can recognize their mother's smell once they are born. And their nerves are recognizing sensations and things. Um, and they can detect light through the skin of the womb. So there are things about the creation that the baby can perceive, but they, they are looking almost through a glass darkly. And then the baby is born. And it is a traumatic experience for the baby, it's squishing and, 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 and contracting, and it must be extremely uh, stressful, like to a point. But then all of a sudden, they're able to perceive in a much more full way a creation that they could never have conceived, a, a, like an existence that they never could have conceived. But mm -hmm. everything in the womb is preparing them for that. And, and so if, if we are like that, the idea that we are we can't conceive of what's going to happen in ages to come mm -hmm. or we don't know what it's going to be like and this world is going to be gone like you guys said and we're not going to recognize the people that we we were we were around and so on but what we will have is those spiritual principles the the those attributes of yahweh the things that we're preparing us for that will be part of that and it'll be so much more vivid and and real you know and so that has given me great comfort um you know but i also like i said i still sometimes feel a little anxious so that's why i was reluctant to work with this one but thank you for making me do it <laughs> and also <laughs> thanks for the opportunity so that's all i think i can do with it if anybody has anything else i would be very happy to hear it thank hallelujah you. Hallelujah. That was great, that was Sarah. Great, Sarah. Um, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, were you asking a question or were uh, at the at the very end there? Well, or, like, I guess my beginning question was, is the reason that this isn't divided, why is this one not divided? Is it because this represents just the holy place because you're supposed to stand in the holy place does this whole one represent the kingdom so like or eternity so he's no longer the pattern like i don't understand why this one's not divided into a pattern or does that not even matter am i reading into it too much uh, well i never thought of myself why um 
why this 48th plate, uh, I never noticed it didn't have divisions in it. Um, but, you know, um, but it is a body. And really, uh, you know, the body does have three parts. So um, I guess it's showing kind of that the three are, are one, you know, because um, you do have, you know, a head, a chest, and an abdominal cavity. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so, um, you know, there may not be, you know, actual divisions there, but I would say it's still threefold. But um, maybe just showing forth that threefoldness is in, in, in more of a unified way, you know. So I guess that's how I would look at it. But, you know, that's, that's just my feelings on it. Um, you know, I have, I, I'd have to think that's a good question, though. And it's something that um, I'd have to meditate on. Um, anybody else? Yeah, I, I was going to say, Dr. Turner um, and Sarah, that, you, you know, I don't know where this is in the scriptures, but... Uh, when it says, I think at Yahshua's uh, death, burial, and resurrection, it says that the the veils in the in the temple or in the tabernacle were ripped in two. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. you know, you could go straight in now. I mean, even in an age that we're in, with the infirmities of your mind, you don't have to go to the preacher or the pope or the dean or whatever. You can go right straight in unto Yahweh Elohim Yahshua with the infirmities of your mind and appeal to him for whatever your petition is on, onto the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, you know, you know what I mean? So he's standing, I think it's in, in their prophecy somewhere too about how that he's standing the whole length of the tabernacle of the whole length of the temple and the bells are ripped out. So am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think though that the only veil that was ripped was ripped out was the veil between the holy place and the most holy place. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, however, there was a door in in the first veil so you could see that there you know that that veil uh was op could be open also so um yeah you know and i'm not trying to be picky i'm just trying to be accurate you know yeah yeah of course of course um, but that's what i'm looking at seeing you know that the fact that there's no uh divisions drawn in that particular um plate we know like like dr turner said you know uh a physical body has three sections, but as we walk around, you can't see that, you know, we learn that, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, but these three are one and, and, and the bride is there too, but you can't see her. And you know? then, can I ask a question when you said the physical body has three parts, but does the spiritual body does also We're body, soul, and spirit, right? Right. That's right, right, absolutely. I mean, you never get away from the that. Oh yeah, you. these three are one uh, yeah. always. Oh yeah, the reason the physical is that way because the spirit was that way first. Right. Or is that way? Not was. Right. Is that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is Lisa. When, when we go back to the Moses chart, I can't help but think of this because this image uh, here is also on the Moses chart. Mm-hmm and at the very top and it starts out with elohim as one and then at the end as as a body you know what i mean as a as a body and the tabernacle is, right and it's break the tabernacle explains him that's how we that's what we use to understand him and it just seems like it starts out with yahweh elohim and ends up with Yahweh Elohim. I don't know if that it's very basic, mm -hmm. but he he's not. I mean, he's one, and and to understand him, he's got the you know the, there is a, a principle of three for sure. I don't know. It's it's a good question, Sarah. But you know what I mean. At the end there, he's he's one, and at the beginning, he's one. Mm. I, I like one. that something from me. <laughs> yeah, go Gary. Oh, that's Anthony. 
Yeah. Um, one thing we have to keep in mind that Elohim and Yahshua is one and the same. Mm -hmm. He's the same. He's no, there's no division in him. You see, when he, when they asked, when they asked Yahshua, show us the father, he didn't go, he didn't say, well, the father over here and I'm over here. They were looking at Yahshua in the flesh and he said, I am the father. You see me, so, you've seen the father. You see the father. It, it, it's, it's no separation. He got three miles, he got two, two manifestations of his spirit, spirit state, but he's not separate. See, Yahweh and Elohim is one and the same. He when you he said you show us the father, the father was within him. But you didn't see you didn't see three like a uh, most holy place, holy place court round about. You seen Yahshua. Now Yahshua mm -hmm. and Elohim the same thing. Uh, Yahweh El Yahshua is pure spirit. He's not a physical, he's not a physical person. He had a he had a physical body on, but that that was a temporary. Yah Yahweh and Elohim is one and the exact same. There's no Elohim is his title, but that's Yahshua. You see, and he he's not separated. So when you when he when when he appeared to them, Elohim appeared to him. That was Yahshua. He didn't he appeared to them as a tabernacle. He appeared, he turned into a tabernacle to explain his his eternal nature. So he's, a, he's a unity. He's you see he he, he that's that's just to show his his eternal nature. But Yahshua is a unity. He is one. My question, I was just going to ask Sarah, because it must have, it might have went over my head or something, or I missed it, that you said why your question, I think you said you, you had a question that about why this was Joshua and not Yahweh. And I don't know, did you, was that what you, was that one of your questions you said? Yeah, because initially when I looked up that though that latin phrase it told me holy of holies mm -hmm. which if i'm thinking of the most holy place i think of how yahweh's name is written on the very top of that Elo eloistic vision um however then in the textbook it didn't say holy of holies it said tabernacle of tabernacles and so then i was like oh okay elohim as the original pattern would be like the tabernacle of all other tabernacles. So I guess I was saying that was my initial question when I looked up the Latin translation of that sanctum sanctorium or whatever, but holy of holies, most holy place, that's not how it was defined in the textbook. So when I read in the textbook, it made more sense of describing Elohim as that broken down, like that pattern. Does that make sense? what I was saying, or how can I clarify? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I thought, I thought it makes sense. Um, I'm like you when I, uh, this, this is definitely the scariest plate to try to address because there's no, well, there's, uh, you know, there's there's not much there. You got to just look at the principles. I mean, we yeah. you know we you have the the description there in Revelations, the first chapter, first chapter. But um, I thought you did a beautiful job just yes. bringing out uh, those principles and the seven stars and the candlesticks and and that 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 where you got the sanctum of Saint Torbs. I mean, it, it's really uh, to me kind of kind of cool how that. You know, I've read through the, the textbook at least twice, maybe more, and certainly some parts a lot, uh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe 50 times. And, and yet, you know, you, you, you found that principle there in, in the textbook. And I, I you know, um, there, there were, when we were in Green Bay, um, uh, when Rick Trevison got on the floor, remember he talked about how that, um, you know, sometimes he thinks of Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua like the Trinity. He kind of goes back to that way of thinking, seeing that they're, they're separate. And, you know, like a Anthony was, was trying to say how that, you know, that, that they're all one. And that I think that there's a difference between uh, you know, the operation of the spirit and, you know, how Yahweh operates as 
pure spirit, how Yahweh operates as Yahweh Elohim, and how Yahweh operates as Yahshua the Messiah. How that when he's, you know, uh, manifested in, in those ways, it's all Yahweh. It's all a unity. There's, there's no veils, but there is a different operation. Uh, uh, there's different things that he did. You know, for example, uh, in the tabernacle, the operation in the court roundabout was nasty. Um, death, blood, you know, guts, burning flesh, you know. Um, it, it, if, if I was a priest, I would definitely want to work in the, mo in the holy place. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you had bread, you know, you, you were anointed, you were wearing nice garments, you, you know, all this kind of stuff. But, um, you know, so you look at the, the, the priest would operate in all three of those parts of the tabernacle and you had a different operation, but it all culminated uh, in atonement being made. You couldn't have atonement without the sacrifice in the court roundabout. You couldn't have atonement without the garments of uh, beauty and glory, which were kept in the uh, altar of incense. Uh, you couldn't have atonement without that incense going into the most holy place. So it had, it all had, you had like kind of separate operations, but all had one purpose and that was salvation. So, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, like Rick was saying that sometimes in his mind, he still thinks of Yahshua being, you know, being Yahweh's little boy kind of thing. You know what I mean? And yet it is Yahweh, you know, in, in it, it, is a, it is a unity. So I don't know if that makes any sense, uh, you know, but um, so anyways, uh, what can anybody else? Yeah, can I say one more thing uh, on that same note you're talking about, Dr. Turner? Um, I understand it better. It's easier for me anyway to realize that um, Yahshua, the Messiah, is Yahweh in the sonship degree. Can we say it like that? Because they're one. And and then another example, too, uh, just taking the natural to understand the spirit. You take me. Um, I'm a mother. I'm a wife, but I'm also a daughter, but it's still me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and most people have three mm -hmm. names, you know, mm -hmm. which really is one name. You know, mm -hmm. I'm Sheree Roundtree. I use my maiden name as my middle name, not that I'm married, but Sheree Roundtree Williams. Three names, but one person. So you got Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, these three are one. I mean, I'm just saying that that helps me anyway. <laughs> so okay that's it and I, I thought you go ahead sherry i'm sorry no go on joe i was just uh i was just go ahead, going to conclude so go ahead go ahead and say what you're doing. okay i was just going to say too we also have to remember and you mentioned this earlier joe that we're going to go on learning in ages to come so you know we may not understand all of this now but it's like a um you know a preview at you know for what's to come you know uh -huh. so that we'll have been like exposed to it you know so when when we do go on learning in ages to come and i know it's not physical and i'm talking kind of like that but it's not we know that but um you know we'll we'll have that foundation if i can say it that way you know Mm -hmm. in which to build on, you know, to understand. We don't know what it's going to be like exactly in learning in ages to come, but, you know, we do know that, you know, we know what it's like now, so, you know, so. so I again, thought just, exist I'm sorry, go ahead. No, so just keeping in mind that, you know, we're going to be learning in ages to come and we may not understand everything on these charts, you know, but we know the basics, we know the foundation, we know enough that to take us into the next stage, if I can say it that way, you know? Yeah. I, I love the example that Sarah used with the womb too, because um, I've, I've done some studying into that as far as what a, what a baby actually, uh, um, mm -hmm. that they can, so for example, if you eat food with garlic, they can taste the garlic in the amniotic fluid. 
and they, you know, they determine this. They can hear the music and they can hear the, they, they really hear the mother's voice and the beating of her heart. And so um, when they do come out, it's just like, you know, like in that movie with Bruce Willis, you know, put me back, <laughs> you know. Um, hopefully we won't have that experience when we, you know, uh, move on to, to, the, to the ages to come. And, and you know, I, I, I understand having trepidation. I mean, we, sh we should. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and w because of that, trep you know, if someone says, oh, I don't worry about anything. Well, maybe you should, you know, and um, maybe ya Yashua allows that, you know, we do have confidence to a point. But I do believe that it's good to fear to some degree because that will keep you coming to class and keep you diligent, you know, in, in wanting to know more and more, you know, uh, uh, about Yahweh and his purpose. So, um, so, uh, so we're a minute over. Sarah, I thought you did a beautiful job. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I thought that that was really well done. Um, and, and matter of fact, I thought uh, everybody that, mm -hmm. that uh, took a plate I, I appreciate you taking a plate. Thank you. I thank you very much. Um, I, I enjoyed it very much. And um, I think that what we'll do from now on is we'll just uh, uh, have a, a, a regular Zoom class on Wednesdays for a while. And uh, we, could, we could maybe have workshops uh, again on other things in the future. So uh, I'll just turn it over to the moderator. Th thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. All right, hallelujah. Okay, so we'd like to thank everyone for attending today's Zoom class. And we hold Zoom classes on Wednesdays and Sundays, on Wednesdays from 7 to 9, and Sundays from 11 to 1. Uh, you have the address here to 6615 Sheldon Road in Town and Country. And let us all be dismissed for the doxology, taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.